Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Often, when I'm trying to come up with an idea for a new Photoshop tutorial, I'll open up either the beta version of Photoshop, or in this case, the current version of Photoshop, and I'll go to the top help menu. From there, I'll go down to what's new. When I do that, I'll get this discover dialog box, and from here, I could see what has been recently added to Photoshop. You can see, in this case, Adobe recently added something called Select Details and something else called Adjust Colors. And I could see older stuff down here. There's seven other things that have been added in previous versions. Now, not only could I see what has been recently added, but I also could learn how to use these new features as well. For example, if I want to learn how to use Select Details, I'll just click on this and it will actually, in most cases open up an image into Photoshop and give you a tutorial on how to use it. But the thing is, it always will present the new feature in its best light, meaning I'm not going to be really learning any of the pitfalls that one might encounter when using this new feature. So, as I mentioned, I'll often open up Photoshop, go and open up this um, this what's new dialog or discover dialog, and I'll see what's new. And you know, if you watch my YouTube channel, you know I recently did a video on select details and another one on adjust colors. Well, that's all fine and dandy. I learn how to use it here and I do my video. And often my video is relatively glowing. I'm talking about how great this new feature is. That's because I haven't used it enough to learn any of the pitfalls. Well, in today's video, I want to kind of make up for something I've done in the past. In the past, I've done several videos on generative fill and generative expand. And for the most part, those videos were positive videos. I was talking about how great it is. But there is a major pitfall that I think I mentioned maybe in a couple videos, but I really didn't delve into that uh, heavily. Specifically, there is a resolution limit. And this resolution limit could really make th these two features like unusable for you because most of us are using high resolution cameras, you know stuff above 30 megapixels and the thing is if you are trying to add something to the image that is larger than what the resolution image is or resolution resolution limit is it will add it but it will be lacking in resolution because it kind of had to blow it up to fit it there same thing for generative expand if you're trying to expand too many pixels um it will lack resolution it won't look right and I'm going to show you that with generative expand because it's a little more obvious than using generative um, generative fill. Now, the resolution limit currently is 2,000 by 2,000 pixels. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have an image that is 2,000 or 2,000 pixels or smaller. It just means that the pixels you add to it have to be 2,000 by 2,000 pixels or smaller for it to not be lacking in the resolution that I was talking about. Now, just let me show you. I think it might be better. Uh, this specific image is uh, 5,504 pixels wide by 8,256 pixels tall. So it is an uncropped image. And let's just pretend that I didn't take any horizontal shots and I need a horizontal shot. So I'll use generative expand for that. So I'm going to get the crop tool and the ratio it was shot, of course, with the standard camera or most common cameras at least are two by three right so i want to flip this so i'm going to just click these arrows right here to flip it so that i have a horizontal and then i'll take this one all the way up to the top limit and this one all the way down here and then i'm going to take the lighthouse and i'm going to move it to the left so that it is on the left hand vertical rule of thirds line so i have a lot of pixels that i have to make up here over here on the left and over here on the right and i guarantee that it's way more than well the height alone is 8256 pixels and then it has to make up all this as well and that's definitely more than 2000 pixels so you'll see that when we actually look at it when it's done it's going to look a little kind of blurry so we're going to go up here and we're going to go to this drop down and we're going to change it to generative expand and we're going to click the check mark don't have to type anything in because it's just going to use the scene and try to add something that looks like it belongs there. And it does send the image up to Adobe servers to do this. And with most generative functions in Photoshop, it's going to come back with three variations. And we could choose which variation we think might look best. So here's one. Here's two. 
and here's three. Now, let's say this one. Okay, let's just go with this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the... No, I'll stay here for a minute. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to hit the uh, Command Plus on my Mac a couple times. And then I'm going to scroll down. And if you could see right in here, here's the line. You can see over here sharper and over here is blurrier. Look at these rocks over here, how sharp they are. And then as we go over here, see how it got blurrier. And that's because it had to, like, it only had 2,000 pixels to work with and it had to blow it up to fit it in here. And you can see how it is blurry. Now, there is something that has been added later where you could double this resolution and make it 4,000 by 4,000. And to do that, just where you have your variation that you're currently viewing, uh, hover over that little thumbnail, and it's this little icon right here. And this is Enhance Detail. So we're going to click on that, and then it's going to take a second. You'll see that pretty, much, pretty soon a progress bar will appear up here. And you could try to kind of look in here and you could see that it will improve but it still won't be perfect and we'll let it do its thing so it's just going to take a second okay it did it now you, you know how could we test it well the one right next to it is the original one so this now you see there's four here to pull down here like this so you can see there's four so this is the one this, with this grayed out. This is the higher resolution image, 4,000 by 4,000. Here's the one that is the less resolution. Higher resolution, less res res resolution. I think it's more obvious if you look at the rocks. So there is the higher resolution image. You can see the maybe the shrubbery. To borrow from Monty Python, the shrubbery is a little sharper. And then when we go here, it's a little more blurry. But... I mean, if you're going to just print, um, you know, 8 by 10 or something like that, it probably will look fine. But if you're going to get anything, you know, any much bigger, or if you're do, using it for someone where people are going to pixel peep, they're going to notice the difference. And that is um, a huge detriment, um, I think, uh, to this new feature. And something, in my opinion, that uh, Adobe should address soon. They should hopefully, here's the on the left-hand side, by the way. Um, I just think it's something that they um, they should increase uh, the resolution because very few people are shooting with lower meg megapixel cameras, like 4 megapixels or less. Uh, most people are using something uh, considerably higher, and they're going to run into this issue. Now, you can see here is the original variation that I chose, and you can see this fence, how kind of blurry it is. And then when we go over to the one that was doubled in resolution, you could see it improves, but it's still not good enough. So there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now, often um, on my website, uh, when I create the boxes for the courses I use, I have to kind of um, create an image for the box that I never would have framed in real life, meaning I would have the model in the lower right-hand corner with a lot of space to the upper left so that when it wraps around the box, it looks right. And I use Generative Expand in order to make some of those boxes. And um, it usually will look fine on the box because no one's going to notice it. No one's really looking for it in the box situation. Um, but overall, if if I was thinking of printing that image or anything like that, I would have to think twice. So that's it. I just kind of wanted to explain to you why sometimes I might do a video and I'm presenting a new feature in its best light. Uh, mainly it's because that's the way I learned how to use it. And then after I used it a while, I kind of learned some of the um, things that um, it's not so good at. And then I hope then to do these videos in the future where I'll talk about, well, you know what? It's good, but it's not as good as I made it out to be. So in this case, uh, generative fill and generative expand probably, um, you know, it's, it's nice, but it's probably not something that you're going to want to use on high resolution images uh, that you want to print relatively large. Thank you. Everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.